again. <clears throat> I had a request um, asking if I could tape the process of coloring up the rest of Eva. I used her for one of the red hair videos the other day. And since I was going to use her on a card tomorrow, I thought I might as well get that done. Okay, so here's my list of colors, and there's a lot of them. I pulled all my colors. I'm going to be using this uh, Winter Park paper from Echo Park. And so, you know, I wanted to match the reds and the different browns and blues and aquas and greens in it. So, I'm just going to get started, and I'm going to... Let's see, let's color her pants with our E55, E35, E57. So, I've already established in the last video, I have my uh, light source coming in from the left, so I want to continue with that when I start coloring up her clothes. So, I start light um, and work up to dark and then back down, so I'm just laying in my color where I know my uh, it's going to be the darkest shadows when we get all done and colored up. So I'm just getting the color on there. Thinking this just lets me plot out um, kind of, you know, the, because this side of the leg is closest to the light source, at the end, when we get all the colors blended, this will be the lightest area all through here. Same on this hip, and then across her pelvis here. Now I'm going to go to E35, and I'm just going to get that on here. Not quite as far as the 55. And this one was an experimentation. I haven't <clears throat> done this before. I was just trying to match to this kind of light brown in the house. So we'll see how it works. Then my darkest in this grouping is going to be the E57. And I don't know... <clears throat> There's a slight difference in the E3555. I don't know if it's enough that I would say it's terribly necessary. Probably could get away with just the 5557. But like I said, I wanted to try something new and see if it was worth, you know, kind of remembering for a later date. But let's see. Let's see how it works in the end. So this is back to the E35. Now I'm just kind of starting over the 57 and pulling in towards that area that we left white. This is where we start blending the colors together and filling in um, what we left white. And then to my E55, just working from the opposite direction, blending in. Because I don't want to take this over the 57. Same on this leg. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to go back with my 57 just a little bit. And then I think just to the 55 to clean it up. And we'll call this one a live and learn. I don't think I needed the 35. It didn't do much for me in that grouping. But I like how that turned out. Okay. So now I think I'm going to do her top in blues. So I'm going to use the B93, 95, 97. Most of all these um, groupings that I uh, pulled fell more 
towards, I'll show you. So like I've pulled uh, the YG 95, 97, 99. You'll see that's at the bottom there, the very gray toned um, yellow greens. And I've got the BG 72, 75, 78, which are very um, gray, blue, greens as well. And then I've got my um, B93, 95, 97. Again, very gray uh, blues. And so that's very consistent um, throughout the whole color palette that I pulled for this little gal and it matched the color palette from the paper that I'll be using with her. Okay, so back to our regularly scheduled programming. Just going to get the blue on here and I think I'm going to do her waistband blue as well on the coat. Now B95 and I, you know this her little arms and her top here actually are really small um, I probably could have gotten away with going just the one blend down you know dark to light um, but I just naturally always kind of tend to pull my light marker first to start using so I'll usually blend up and blend down but as small as this is I could have easily gotten away with um, going dark down to light just the once I think. Okay now I'm going to blend back down with the 95. And finish with the 93. Just filling in that area we left white. Okay. Now I want to give her very dark brown boots and I'm just going to use E47, E49. I'm going to do the same thing where I'm laying it on opposite that light source, leaving white at first. Come in here, underside of the shoe. E49. I'm going to go under that pant leg. It's going to cast a little bit of a shadow down there. And now just blend them both together with the E47. going to, well it's probably going to dry pretty quickly because I usually then will take my dark, the E47, and reinforce um, the line um, between the two shoes just to give it a little bit more separation and I'll reinforce the little shadow over there. Okay, and I'm not going to blend that um, anymore. So now I got to decide, I think I'm going to go with the blue green uh, for her let's see let's see let's see her gloves or no I'm gonna go with her little headband um, on the earmuffs blue green and I got a lot of orange from her hair that I forgot to push out so really quickly let me take the colorless blender and I use, I'm using the chisel end um, to just kind of push out some of that orange that I got a little messy with last video. And I'm going to let that dry. So we'll do her uh, gloves in green. And we will start dark this time because I'll remember. And I'll just show you how that goes because these are tiny little hands so I'm just getting my darkest one on a little bit here YG97 gonna blend it a little bit I'm not laying down a whole lot and then just gonna finish off any of the rest of that white space with a YG95 
and kind of like the boots, I'm going to go back in with my YG99 and just reinforce the shadow a little bit. Okay, so now I'll tackle that headband. Just get a little bit of BG72 on there. And now the BG75. And because this side of her head is further away from the light source, I'm going to lay the darker colors down more over here. And then 78, BG78. And then I'll just take the BG72, kind of blend that, call that good. Now we've got um, her earmuffs and the little fur trim on her jacket. And I just chose a W1 and W3 combination because it went well with the kind of beigey gray in the paper. And I'm just kind of uh, like I did on the curly hair with the tip of my. Um, marker just kind of squiggling in some color nothing precise okay and then her scarf Oh, I can decide if I want to do all those little stripes, which would take forever. Or we can just take our red and use that instead. So we'll do RO5. And I'm just going to do the whole scarf red. And then we'll add a little pizzazz at the end. And then... And then my next color is actually an E07. It's a very red brown. And it's going to tone down the reds real nicely. Um, so they are more consistent with all those gray tone colors that we worked with with the blues, greens, and blue greens. And now we got E19 for our darkest in the combination. Again. Just getting it opposite that light source, underneath her chin back there, the bottom of the scarf there. Blend out with the E07. Blend up into that. We start filling in the white and finish off with our RO5 over here. Okay, nice. Okay, so those are done. Now I'm going to use, oh let's see, let's use our dark brown again for the handle of the shovel. And again we're just going to go E49. And blend with the E47. Okay. And then the handle and the shovel part. I'm going to use a C0, C2, C4 combination. And we're going to try to get the look of kind of a metallic um, steel kind of shovel. So, the light source coming in from the left, this little lip on the shovel is going to cast its own shadow. So even though this is the side that's you know technically closer to that light source, this little lip here is going to block any light from hitting on this side. 
so it's going to come over and this side of the shovel is actually going to get more exposure from that light because it doesn't have a, the little lip uh, blocking it. The lip is actually going to be more in the shadow than on this side where the lip over here is going to be much lighter. And the same rules as our clothing apply on this where it's just the opposite side. It's going to be... Um, <clears throat> going to get a little bit there. Okay. So now I'm going to the C2. And again, just same area, just not quite as far out as I did the first time. But I'm going to get underneath that little lip there and then the back side of the shovel here on that rounded edge. We want this side of the lip here. And that handle. And then our darkest is going to be the C4. Come underneath there and then back on this side. And then this little bit here. Okay, so now I'm just going to start blending back down with the C2. I'm going to pull in. I'm going to fill that. Okay, come further each time and finish with the C0 okay and that's I wouldn't go um, keep fussing with it because the darker it gets just the more gray and less kind of metallic it'll start looking and that is pretty much all I'm going to do for the coloring on her, on little Eva. But to show you um, the scarf, because I chose not to do the individual um, stripes, what I do usually then is take uh, one of my Spica pens, and this is the lipstick one. And I'll just use it, um, and I'll trace right over each of the stripes. So it makes the stripes still intentional. Um, but it's more like um, whoever knit it just added in some, you know, like sparkly yarn at certain intervals instead of doing different colored um, stripes. So that quickens up the process quite a bit and it still looks pretty. And then when you see it in person, it's got a little bit of sparkle to it, which is always nice. And that's pretty much, you know, how I color up little Eva to go with... Uh, this paper here so you can kind of see once I cut her out and get her on the card she matches pretty good with those little houses so I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for keeping the suggestions and requests coming I always enjoy getting those from you guys so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye